1972, a tragic incident unfolded in Merced, California, as seven-year-old Stephen Gregory Stainer became a victim of abduction at the hands of Kenneth Parnell, forever altering the trajectory of his life. Stephen, a young boy from the peaceful suburb of Merced, was making his way home from school on a fateful Monday, just three weeks before Christmas. It was on this day that he was lured into a car, unknowingly embarking on a nightmarish journey that would endure until his 14th birthday. Parnell, a man with a criminal history that included previous convictions for child abuse and impersonating a police officer in the 1950s, had secured employment at Yosemite National Park. Posing as a minister of religion, he skillfully manipulated his naive and unsuspecting co-worker, Erwin Edward Murphy. In 1972, Kenneth succeeded in convincing Irvin to assist him in the abduction of a young boy, deceiving him with the false promise of raising the child in accordance with strict religious principles. On December 4, Stephen Stainer was lured into Parnell's car under the pretext of being taken home. However, he soon found himself transported to a secluded cabin in the Caddis Valley, where he endured a terrifying period of captivity. Subsequently, Stephen and his captor began a nomadic life, crisscrossing the United States, adopting false identities, and dwelling in the shadows. Unfortunately, Kenneth Parnell, seeing Stephen as having outgrown his usefulness, subjected him to the horrifying ordeal of being coerced into participating in the abduction of yet another innocent victim. In 1980, 15-year-old Stephen Stainer accomplished the remarkable feat of saving five-year-old Timothy White from a similar fate. He manages to escape the clutches of Parnell Hut and hitchhikes on a daring journey back to the safety of his hometown. This unexpected return transforms Stephen into a true hero and changes the course of his life forever. Despite this heroic deed, Stephen carried the heavy burden of his childhood trauma throughout his life. Stephen Steiner's Kidnapping Stephen Gregory Steiner was born on April 18, 1965, in the quiet town of Merced, California, and came into the world as a member of the loving Steiner family. Delbert and Kay Steiner and their five children, including Stephen, his brother Carrie, and three sisters, raised their children among the picturesque almond groves and peach orchards of their quaint farming town. Close family, little do they know, a malevolent presence is lurking dangerously close to their idyllic life. Kenneth Parnell worked at Yosemite Lodge, just two hours away from their home. As early as 1972, he began planning a plan to kidnap children and convinced Owen Murphy to join him in implementing the evil plan of indoctrinating children. On that fateful December 4, Murphy played his part, handing out religious tracts to the children while Parnell waited around the corner in his white Buick. Disguised as a charity worker engaged in church-related efforts, Murphy approached young Steiner and asked for potential donations to aid the less fortunate. Trusting and unsuspecting, the boy agreed to help and offered to give him a ride home. In a disturbing twist of fate, a smiling Kenneth Parnell arrived on the scene, and without a trace of suspicion, Stephen willingly entered the car. As they left town, Parnell stopped on Highway 140 and pretended to call Steiner's parents from a payphone. He later told the boy that Delbert and Kay didn't want him back because they thought he was an unnecessary mouth. Meanwhile, his parents told Merced police that their son had not returned from school. An hour later, a massive search for Stephen began, but sadly they found no trace or witnesses. Kenneth took the boy back to his cabin and sent Owen Murphy home. On the first night, Parnell began harassing Steiner and from then on Stephen's life became a terrifying dream. Life with Kenneth Parnell. Not only did Parnell continue to sexually abuse Steiner, he also told the boy that his parents could no longer afford to raise five children. Kenneth convinced Stephen that he had been granted custody and that Steiner would henceforth have a new first and last name, Dennis Gregory Parnell. By doing so, he allowed the boy to keep his middle name. Katie Valley in Mariposa County, 
where Stephen now resides, is a mere 27 miles from Merced. However, investigators faced an uphill battle as they had no leads and were clueless about where to begin their search for the missing child. In the meantime, only a few weeks after Stainer's disappearance, Parnell assumed the role of Stainer's father and successfully enrolled him in Steel Lane Elementary School. As time passed, Stephen was gradually granted more freedom by Parnell. However, Steiner, still quite young, never seriously contemplated running away. Parnell's transient lifestyle saw them constantly on the move, relocating to different cities such as Santa Rosa in Sonoma County or Compucha in Mendocino County. Remarkably, Kenneth didn't object to the young boy indulging in detrimental habits like drinking and smoking. In a bid to reward Steiner for adapting to his new persona, Parnell gifted him a Manchester Terrier on his 11th birthday, a faithful companion he affectionately named Queenie. Meanwhile, Parnell even ventured into dating and cohabiting with a woman named Barbara Mathias. As time passed, it became evident that Steiner had aged, prompting Parnell to desperately seek out younger victims. With Stephen's inadvertent help, Parnell attempted to locate a new child, but Stephen actively thwarted these efforts multiple times, driven by his desire to prevent another child from suffering a fate similar to his own. Despite Stephen's resistance, Kenneth eventually succeeded. On February 14, 1980, Steiner and his classmate, Randall Sean Pullman, enticed five-year-old Timothy White into Parnell's clutches. The escape. Approximately two weeks after Timothy White's abduction, Steiner heard the young boy's cries while residing on Ukiah Street in Mendocino County. Overwhelmed with determination and heartache, Steiner was resolute in his resolve to liberate Timothy from Kenneth's grasp. This act of defiance took Kenneth by surprise, as over the years, he had allowed Steiner the freedom to come and go as he pleased, confident that Steiner would always return to his captors. However, on March 1, 1980, Kenneth's worst nightmare became a reality. After Parnell completed his night shift as a security guard, his two captives made a daring escape from the cabin. Steiner and White hitchhiked a distance of 40 miles to Yupia, eventually arriving at the police station. While initially stating that he was merely trying to locate Timothy's home, it soon became apparent to the police that they were dealing with two kidnapping victims. Eventually, Stephen disclosed his true identity, saying, my real name is Stephen Gregory Steiner. The court, despite Steiner's credible testimony, Parnell was never charged with sexual assault owing to the intricate aspects of American law. The crime had occurred in another state and the statute of limitations had already expired. On March 2, 1981, Kenneth was arrested, tried, and subsequently found guilty of two kidnappings. His sentence amounted to seven years in prison, of which he served only five before being released on probation. Edward Murphy, Parnell's accomplice in Stephen's abduction, received a five-year prison sentence with eligibility for parole after two years. Seen Pullman, Stainer's high school friend who had participated in White's kidnapping, was sentenced to a juvenile detention center. Parnell's friend, Barbara Mathias, who had resided with Kenneth and Stephen for a period, was never charged with conspiracy and cooperated with authorities during Parnell's trial. A new life. Stephen's reunion with his family stirred up a minor family scandal. Having grown accustomed to a more liberal lifestyle while under Parnell's influence, he had developed serious habits that clashed with his parents' strict rules. He quickly became a national media hero, frequently invited to events and performances. However, Stainer's life took a turn for the worse, leading him to eventually drop out of school due to his struggles with drinking and smoking. Reflecting on his past, he shared in an interview I returned almost as an adult, but my parents initially saw me as a seven-year-old. Things have changed so much. Sometimes I blame myself for what happened because I could have gone home so many times. What would my life be like then? In 1985, 
he crossed paths with his future wife, Jody Edmondson. They welcomed a daughter and a son into the world, but Steiner's happiness proved to be short-lived. While residing in Merced and employed at a local pizzeria, Steiner utilized a portion of the $30,000 he had earned from the sale of his life story rights to acquire a Kawasaki EX500 motorcycle. Tragically, on the evening of September 16, 1989, as he was returning home from work, Stainer was struck by a Plymouth Volar. The driver of the vehicle fled the scene, leaving Steiner injured on the road. Regrettably, Steiner succumbed to his injuries before the ambulance could reach him. He was laid to rest in the Merced County Cemetery, beside his grandparents, in a funeral attended by approximately 500 mourners. Among those who served as pallbearers was 14-year-old Timothy White. Remarkably, Steiner's older brother, Kerry Steiner, was later revealed to be a serial killer and was convicted for the murders of four women in 1999. In 2004, another individual named Parnell was sentenced to 25 years in prison for attempting to abduct a child and passed away while incarcerated in 2008. Timothy White went on to have a successful career as a Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputy until his untimely demise on April 1, 2010, at the age of 35 due to a pulmonary artery occlusion. Much like Steiner, White left behind a wife and two young children.